Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. I know I'm a little bit late to the party here on this earthquake report, but I literally just got out of the shower. And uh, I look at my notifications and sure enough, there's a really big earthquake to report on. I know it's one of the bigger ones I've seen. You know, recently there's been a lot of magnitude fives. Um, I'm getting things situated here, but I'm going to go ahead and read this article, and I think this is from one of the uh, news stations in Idaho, I believe. So, Boise, Idaho, at 5.52 p.m., uh, you know, this evening, mountain time, of course, uh, states throughout the Northwest were rattled by a 6.5 magnitude earthquake, according to the USGS. Uh, the USGS reports that the epicenter was west of Chalice and was 73.3 uh, miles north of Meridian. I know it was about 78 miles, I believe, to the north um, of Idaho, or sorry, excuse me, of Boise, Idaho. So, you know, Obviously, earthquakes, right, continuing to happen. I'm going to keep on reading this article here. Um, where were we? According to the USGS map, the epicenter of the earthquake was next to Shake Creek and uh, Laidlow Creek in the north-central Idaho mountains. Uh, KTVB staff felt the possible earthquake from North Boise, Meridian, and Napa. Uh, one of our staff members said her family in Montana felt the earthquake, and that's according to this KTVB article. People in seven different states have reportedly felt the 6.5 magnitude earthquake, according to the USGS intensity map. Um, this earthquake came less than two weeks after a major quake rattled Utah, which I did a video on. It was around the Salt Lake City area, and that was, you know, less than two weeks ago. And that was Idaho's neighbor to the south is uh, Salt Lake City, Utah area. So uh, the USGS said that the earthquake's depth was about 10 kilometers. So that is uh, what just, you know, not too long ago happened. A big 6.5 magnitude earthquake, uh, just about 78 miles or so to the north of Boise, Idaho. So we're continuing to see the birth pangs develop. I mean, you know, one of my favorite verses in all in all the Bible, and for good reason, because we're seeing it more and more as the days and really the hours progress. Um, so I'm going to read Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. This is the epitome of an earthquake in diverse places. I mean, we're seeing a lot of magnitude fives. Um, you know, we've even seen more magnitude sevens in the past three to five years than really at any point before that. And uh, now the 6.5 magnitude earthquake around the Boise, Idaho area. So, you know, birth pangs are continuing. Uh, you know, there's a reason why I've said that until we're raptured, we are in a state of permanent high watch because... You know, birth pangs don't decrease in intensity and frequency until the baby comes. They increase uh, until the baby is delivered. And likewise, these signs, right, the, particularly in verse 7 of Matthew 24, um, these signs that serve as birth pangs are not going to decrease in intensity and frequency until Christ uh, return, they're going to in you know increase in both the intensity and frequency. So by no means is are all these various things just going to calm down. So you know the birth pangs are continuing, and it's why it's important you know now more than ever that if you have not believed on the Son of Man, if you have not put your full faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you do so right now. Right now can be your moment of salvation. Right? Uh, the Gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's really, really simple. It's that Jesus died on the cross. He shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary for the remission of all mankind's sin, past, present, and future. He was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Right? In the nanosecond you believe on Christ in your heart, you are saved. You are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. It's Ephesians 4.30. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity. I know I haven't read these particular verses in a while, but uh, they pertain to the gospel message. Uh, I'm going to read to you Romans 10, 9, and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Once you reach that point where you admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, right, that's repentance, a change of mind, a change of heart, metanoia, 
And then followed by that is the belief in the gospel. And the moment you believe is when you're actually saved and when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you. Time is short. You know, now can be your moment to believe on Christ and be saved, to hop on that proverbial ark as a result. Um, it'll be the best decision you've ever made because it's not the will of the Father that any should perish but that all come to a state of repentance. Uh, we are so close to the return of Christ. These things prove our point that Jesus' return is so imminent. And you know, if you're not 100% sure that you would go up in the rapture, I, I implore you to make sure that you've believed on Christ. So that is the earthquake update. I uh, just wanted to you know, let you all know that. I had some videos I was going to make today, but I just wasn't feeling it. I was just getting kind of weary, you know. I mean, we all reach that state every now and then, but I had to do something on this earthquake. I'm trying to keep an eye on all the world events. So I'll see you all in the next video, should the Lord tarry, which should be tomorrow. I have a rapture vlog planned. Um, otherwise, I guess I'll see you in the air, right? God bless you all.